Hello, welcome to this DCS FA18C tutorial video. In this video, we will cover the EW, countermeasures, and SA pages. So to begin, if you haven't, go to our general playlist and view the DICE setup video and follow the instructions. After you've completed that and matched the settings shown in the video, come on back and we'll pick up. So if we go to our menu, we will find EW. During setup, we selected HUD. This allows us to see these lines on our HUD and in our helmet. These lines signify radar contacts that our EW, Electronic Warfare, is picking up. So this 15, for example, shows an F-15 contact to about our 7 o'clock, an E-3 AWACS to about our 4 o'clock and that information is repeated in our helmet. So we don't have to be looking at our HUD to get an idea of where a target is. One thing to note is this will change in relation to where our helmet is looking. So if we wanted to know where that F-15 was, we would put it to the 12 o'clock position, and you'll see the F-15 is a bearing of two, is a bearing of 080 from us, or thereabouts. If we wanted to know where the E3 was, we could look at it, and we'll see the E3 is about a bearing of 324 from us, which happens to be that little circle all the way out there. On the EW page, we set up MAN1 because when we press our countermeasure dispense switch in the forward position, or in the back position, we will always um, use program one, man one, and if we press our countermeasure switch in the forward position, it will always play program five. We set it up just like the controls in the F-18, where back, man one, is our flares, already set up for us in dice, and if we change to man five, we'll see that it is our forward press already set up for us in dice as chaff. So remember to always keep this in man one because our back press will always play our currently selected program and our forward press will always play program five. If for some reason we wanted to edit these in the plane and not in dice, we would click this arm button and it would open the menu where we could set our countermeasures. So if we wanted to change program one, say the chaff, we could select the chaff button, press the up arrow for however many chaff we wanted to dispense. I'll put it back to zero. Same goes with flares. We can change the number that program will play. Repeat for how many times the program will repeat. In this case, it will just play once and the interval between the flares, so 0 0.5 seconds. After you make any changes here, you would press the save button. Without pressing the save button, our changes would not be saved. All right, let's get up in the air and we will see how that operates. Clear runway. You're in air to air combat. It's a good idea to keep your radar on the right and your EW on the left but it is not strictly necessary as all of the EW information is repeated both in our HUD, enemy air contacts on our SA, and our enemy air contacts on our air-to-air -air radar page. Now that we're in the air, we can be detecting more uh, air radar signatures or detection radar signatures. 
this AE-49 and what have you are all ships because of the little arc on the bottom. They happen to be our friendly systems, AE for Aegis, 49 for one of the other uh, ships or destroyers. At this point, I'm going to show the SA page in a little more depth. So if you recall our shortcut, bring our diamond to this bottom page. After it is our sensor of interest, our soy with the diamond, we'll press down again. And now we're on our SA page. On our SA page, we see this little yellow triangle that signifies an EW page contact. So this is one of the contacts behind us. Let's go ahead and expand the range. On the SA page, we can see friendly units. This signifies our friendly neighborhood Red Hawk out there. These red empty diamonds signify data link contacts that have been identified as enemy contacts. And this dotted circle signifies a SAM radius. So let's go ahead and fly towards those SAMs so I can demonstrate in a bit more detail some more functions of these lines that we see on the HUD and in our helmet. Additionally, sometimes you'll get nice information. On this circle, we can see inside of it is a 15 and an 11. It might be hard to read because they are overlaid, but that shows us that there's an SA-15 SAM site and an SA-11 SAM site within those circles. So we have a better idea of the threat present. In startup, us pressing this RWR option is what allows us to see the yellow triangle that you saw earlier on here. And if the target was in front of us, we would see a yellow triangle out here on our air-to-air -air radar. That will be covered in more detail during the air-to-air -air radar tutorial. Here we can see some enemy contacts from our data link, which we turned on using DL during startup give us a better situational awareness of what's happening out in the world around us. As a reminder, we have a chaff and flare counter in the bottom left of our SA page, and we also have it in the upper left of our EW page. Fuel tank is empty. I'm going to arm my plane and jettison that. And it'll come out of burner, just so I can uh, pretty low level so I can make it there and back. As part of your EW system, you have a jammer. Down here, this ECM knob, we set it to REC during startup, so it is turned on but not actively enabled. Here are some of those yellow triangles popping up from that RWR setting. That shows us that there are enemy F-15 contacts out in this direction. For our jammer, we set it to, sorry about that, picking up where we left off. I wanted to demonstrate that while we had the chance. Our jammer, we set to REC during startup. So it is warmed up and ready to go, but it is not turned on. If we wanted to turn it on, we could put it to XMIT, or utilizing the keybinds we set during the controls video, you can use those binds to toggle it. If we turn our jammer on, it will try to block any incoming radar locks, but when it's active, you will see jammer on your air-to-air -air radar page, and you'll see XMIT up here. And while it is active, we are not able to use our radar, so it is a purely defensive tool. We will not be able to engage or lock enemy targets while it is jamming. We'll cover that more in the air-to-air -air tutorial. I'll put that back to REC. The jammer can be used to jam radar signatures, but it works at a distance. As you get closer to 
a jammer source if you were engaging someone that was jamming or if they were engaging you and you were jamming you'll hit a burn through distance closer up and at that point your jammer will cease to work and they'll be able to lock you regardless it'll essentially just make it harder for them to lock you at a distance all right going back to our map tutorial if you remember those engagement and detection zones these dotted circles represent an engagement zone so as soon as we cross this we are able to be engaged by the sam fields i'll zoom in so we have a better idea of when we're going to cross it all right so now we're being locked by one of those sams which is signified by the long dashed line as opposed to the short solid line now that long dashed line has turned into a long solid line that means that threat is locking has locked and fired on us so i'm going to go a little defensive we'll cover this more in missile evasion tutorials and i'll pop some chaff by hitting my countermeasure switch forward you see the chaff counter going down and we'll cover this in more detail on missile evasion tutorials but if you're evading you want to keep that signature at your 12 o'clock if you're looking out to your side or if you're looking straight on your three year clock or your nine o'clock line depending on which way you're facing they're very angry and they sent quite a few missiles at us so i'm just going to keep them at the three or the nine line and they'll have no chance of hitting us as i'm popping these chaff so once again the long solid lines indicate uh missile threats the dash long lines indicate someone locking us and the short lines indicate a radar sign signature that our plane is detecting so you'll see here at the sand field it keeps alternating between locking us with those long dashed lines and firing on us with the long solid lines something to note our plane will only warn us about radar threats so radar guided missiles and for those threats we will use our chaff like you saw there ir infrared guided missiles our plane will not give us a warning because they are guided by a heat rather than a radar source so if you see a missile flying at you and you don't have a warning from your plane it means that it is an ir missile and you need to pop flares by hitting countermeasure dispense switch back so you see i'm popping flares one caveat to that is that if you have a threat firing on you you have a dead spot coming out the top of your plane and out the belly of your plane i'll try and go back and demonstrate this here so if the top of your plane or the belly of your plane is pointed towards the threat firing on you or locking you, it will drop off your EW. So if you're evading a missile, you need to keep in mind that if you have are pulling and you have your belly or the top of your plane pointed towards the threat, it will drop off and it will stop telling you you have a threat inbound. Don't let that lull you into a false, uh, false sense of security. The threat is still coming. Your plane just cannot detect it. Let's try this here. All right, it dropped off. I'm gonna level out, and you see it's still coming. Belly towards it, it dropped off. Level out, it's still coming. Top towards it, it dropped off. Level out, it's still coming. So just keep that in mind during your evasive procedures, and if you're putting your belly or the top of your plane towards the threat, you keep a mental note of where it is. Once again, we also see the information on our EW page, but it's all in our HUD and in our helmet. And this is where one of the times the helmet really shines through. It will let us know where the threat is, regardless of where we're looking. All right, that covers basic EW and countermeasures. One last thing to note on the SA page, we can utilize waypoint navigation 
just like we could on our HSI from the navigation tutorial. Selecting a waypoint and then hitting waypoint. We'll cover more in the air to ground bombing tutorial what this button WPDSG does. It is weapon designate. So we could set a waypoint or a mark point as a target weapon designate and then we will have a diamond signifying where it is as our target point for our weapons. Once again we'll cover that in a lot more detail during the weapons tutorial. That covers everything. Thanks for watching.